steel scrapbook that will help take our projects from someday to today. We're your typical odd couple with too many old cars and new projects. Between the two of us, it's, it's always something. something. Today we have the 1960 Valiant out and we're going to, I brought it to work today, we're going to put it on the lift and see if we can get some brakes working because I only have brakes on the passenger side. I don't have any brakes at all on the driver's side and it makes it a little sketchy to drive. You hit the brakes, it goes that way, you know, you don't, you don't always want that. So <laughs> we're going to take a look and see what we can do today. Um, and that's as far as I yeah, square. That's as far as I uh that's as far as I had planned for today. You think it'll start? It will start if we drove it over here, stop it. I know, it's just a joke. <laughs> it was supposed to be a joke. This is a slant six, of course it'll start. It's just a matter of how quickly watch this. That's amazing. Now, push button. Reverse is selected. Hit the curb. Select drive. No power steering. Because who needs that? This car doesn't probably even weigh 2,000 pounds. Maybe a little more. Ooh, I'm not used to hoods that open that nice. Everything on this car works pretty nice except the brakes. And it likes to overheat. I haven't figured that out yet. Let's get it in the air and see about some brakes. Actually, let's first check the brake fluid. Let me get a wrench. Seven sixteenths. Take the cap off of the master cylinder. Make sure we have enough fluid in there before we start anything else. It's fairly full. That's full. So we're gonna start with bleeding the brakes and see which side, if any, we have fluid. I know we do here because it pulls the wheel to the, to the right. Uh, but that's the only one I know for sure. So we'll start there. quarter inch uh, wrench hits so uh, just pump it up to like three or four times and then hold it for me. We'll see if we get any juice out of the side at all. I don't think that we are. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Alright. Go to the floor? No, no, not yet. Don't let off of it. I'm not off. So no fluid at this side at all. That's what I was afraid of. Okay. We place this brake line. So let's get this wheel off. And we'll start here. And then we'll go to the other side and then we'll go to the back. Okay. Oh. 
Don't forget you have that loose leg wrench <clears> in the <throat> back passenger. Look at that little bit. Like, tiny. It's like a toy. Oh. <clears throat> One thing you need to always be careful about if you're working on an older model Chrysler in particular is the lug nuts, the studs, because they've got an L stamped in the end of them. They're left-hand threads on this side. I've heard two reasons that Chrysler did this and neither of them really makes sense, so if somebody knows the answer to why this actually is the case on Chrysler's, let us know. Just type it in the comments or something. So you actually want to go to Titan to take them off. Tiny little wheel, like a whole car wheel, like a toy. That's very rusty, so that's going to be a lot of fun to take loose. We have some line wrenches here. I don't think we do. Because that's been messed with before, it's a little bit scarred up and and well, I'll show you. It's just it just kind of messed up from from previous trying of what we were about to try. So I hope that's not an indication of how this is about to go. But basically. Gonna have to tap this on. Look at that, that's awful. It's not gonna hold that at all. But I'm trying to get this to break loose. See, that's what I was afraid of. So we're gonna get the big to big tools out. This is not the best way to do this. So why are we doing it this way? Because it's the only way that we're left with. Okay. There it is. Okay, sometimes you have to get the implements of destruction out. Oh well, let's see if we can let's see if we can cut this. Uh, no, let's just try it to open it. And hope that it breaks loose. Ah, it did. Wow. I'm shocked. I'm glad that we're seeing wetness at this end. That means it's at least getting through there. So this is the problem. And then once we get through it through here, we can check to see if the wheel cylinder is another problem. So we put this back, the new hose is tightened up. Now we put it back through this little brace here. Get this out of the way, make sure it's all the way in. And we take this huskow here. And we bring that out of the way. I'm trying to 
put that back in here so that it holds in place our hose and the wasn't so messed up already. We may have to replace these metal lines eventually. Looks like they could use it. So we're taking off the drum. Yeah. In order to. I'm gonna check the wheel cylinder. And um, uh, on the brake shoes, just gonna see what we've got going on under here. Cleaner and newer than I expected. More of it than I expected. I feel like somebody's been in here before. But maybe not. Straighten out the cotter pin. Get a rag, I guess. Pull the pin out. as far you can without breaking it. After all that, it's not broken? No, I mean, they're made to bend. We should be able to loosen this by hand. If it's any tighter than that, then somebody's over tightened it usually. What a greasy mess. It's okay. Probably need to repack it with some new grease. Feels like the shoes are holding it. Oh, looks like brand new shoes. Don't see any leaking out of that. Hmm. So somebody has been in here before? Yeah, I would say so. That's just all too new looking. Like, here's some old stuff. Yeah, here's some old stuff. Look at that. All black and tarry. The new stuff is like that. Huh. Change of grease, people. So then this should have brakes. So why wouldn't it in the driver's side? If somebody's already messed with it, change the brake shoes over here. We're gonna have to change that, that. What is it? It's working on this side, but this is the wheel cylinder, brake wheel cylinder for the front. Um, and I think it, we bought a new one, so we might as well replace it. Mm -hmm. All right. right yeah, let's do it. See, this is new. Well, I say new, it's probably older than I am, but it's been replaced at some point. I don't think it's original. Pull the brake shoes back a little bit. We're not gonna undo any of this other stuff because we're not changing the shoes. We're just changing that. We so, 
Let me find a wrench that will fit it and we will take it out of there. So long it's stuck. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Now we gotta get in that box and find the one that matches that. Okay. Look at that old thing. Original, I'm sure. Yeah, see, that's where it was sucking air. Oh look, rust. Yeah. So only this side was working a bit. Uh. Wow. Alright then. There we go. Junk. New. Brakes are all bled and on and doing well. The wheel goes and tires back up. Yes. Now, to remember to loosen these to get them on. Lefty tidy righty loosey your miss. Now, what are the plans for the Valiant? Um. I'm going to drive it this way for a little while because they're only original once. Uh, I like original cars, even if they're in not great shape. I like them because they're original and they just kind of tell a story. You know, I don't know the story of these dents, but somebody does or did. Nobody appreciates cars the way they are. Everybody wants to make them new again. I don't exactly prescribe to that idea. Hubcap, my favorite part. Go on there. There we go. Honey. That's that. Now to the rear. The noise is. Oh. Yes, so you had that weird, yeah, that noise. That oh, no, noise. But it doesn't sound good. You can hear it when you drive. Oh, okay. One of the lug nuts came off. Oh. Well, that's cool. But at least the others are tight. I must not have tightened that one. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> Mystery solved. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing we did to the front, to the back now, and hopefully these come off easier than, than they look like. They look a little rusty, but we'll see. Usually to have to take a hammer to them, but this actually feels loose. How about that? Should it be loose? Well, I mean, no, not really. <laughs> Drums are worn pretty good. And shoes are worn. Not too bad, though, overall. Looks a little wet in there, though. I think this might be leaking. So that might be a pro that might be part, an of issue, part of the problem that we're having with them. Keep, we keep getting air in the line. So we will replace these and this rubber line. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah. Same process as the front, just different places. Yeah, just a different, and there's only one for the rear instead of two. So basically that's all you need to know. And then we'll get the brakes bumped up. We'll bleed them again. 
Hopefully we'll have brakes on this thing. We'll Woo! All right. I'm gonna go ahead and put this pig pad down first because I always do it after. It just seems like it makes more sense to do it before because I know what's gonna happen. Now, what are you spraying? Brake cleaner. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes sense. Mm. Aptly named. Yeah. So, this stuff works pretty good and it dries fast, so, um, but, you know, everything, all the nasty should end up on this pad. Continental kit. Continental. Yeah. Anyway. Um, let's check all the lights and uh, hope for the best. Yeah. Oh. oh, no, you can stay back here and check Whatever you want to check. Check since I'm back here. How about brakes? No. Oh, there we go. Tail lights, yes. No. No. Okay. Dash lights on. Nice. No. No. Hey, yes. There we go. Nice. If they're brighter, I don't see it. No. There we go, what those are, yes. Both of them? Yep. Nice. So we have to work on tail lights? Or no, we have to work on lights. Brake lights. Brake lights and blinkers, that's it. Nice. That's like, we're gonna check the switch first, uh, see if we have uh, 12 volts coming into and out of the brake light switch. Okay. So there's no brake light switch under here. It must be out on the master cylinder. It must be a pressure switch, which is a cool. So we'll just have to check it out there. What I'll have you do is pump the brake like you did when we were bleeding it. Um, and I'll just be testing with this to see if it lights up. Okay, sounds good. So the switch is gone. Um, come out and take a look at this. There should be a pressure switch right here. Uh, instead, there's a plug, and we have two wires, which were the pressure, which were the brake light. Um, would have gone there. So somebody has somebody has gotten rid of the pressure switch for some reason. So there's no way we're gonna get brake lights on this car tonight. Well, or... it's always something. There it is. You got to say it. I know, I there. say it all the time. I say it too much, that's why we named this thing. <laughs> all right then, so we're wrapping it up for the evening. Got the brakes at least, yes? Yeah, it's got brakes, but now we need the lights to so the people behind us know that we're stopping. Yeah, okay. well. Not that there'd be anybody behind us in this car. <laughs> Everybody would go around us. It's the next on the list then. All right. Hey, the blinkers work. Yeah. Yeah. So it works great. It just doesn't turn off. Oh. actually ended up working even though they didn't work at first how why I think the only reason they weren't working is the column steering columns full of dirt and years of dirt uh, so by messing with it I got one side to work 
temporarily. Um, we're just gonna have to pull the steering wheel off and clean all of that, all of the electrical connections and everything inside the inside the uh, steering column. I mean, maybe it'll all work that way. It should all work once it's all cleaned up. I mean, it just that's just what happens to cars when they sit a long time. They... And then so, now the Diamond is my absolute favorite car. We did discover a transmission problem that we're gonna send it to a shop to have it fixed. We'll probably remove the engine and transmissions ourselves. Our engine, we'll probably remove the engine and transmission ourselves and take uh, it to a, a, a rebuild shop. Yeah. To see what happens next with the Valiant, give us a like and a subscribe. Yeah, stay tuned. We'll have every car come back. So if there's a car that you're interested in, it's just a matter of time before it comes back around. So, you know, subscribe and click that bell. All right. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Uh -huh.